in the tanning, I can make my own clothing, I can provide tools and gloves and things for friends and family, as well as a service for other folks when needed. Howdy folks, welcome to the new tannery, formerly the Animal Barn, formerly the old blacksmith shop. My name's Michael. Today I'd like to show you guys around the new tannery. This cabin does have a lot of family history for us. My uncle worked out of this as a blacksmith in the 80s and the 90s before he passed away. And we were excited to be able to integrate some of the things that were in the building already, kind of family heirloom, if you will, uh, into our process. Hinges to just old rebar, things like that, that the old blacksmiths were using in here before. This table was actually part of, uh, of the original blacksmith shop. I decided to kind of go in my own direction. I've always been an avid uh, hunter and fisher and outdoorsman, and doing the hide tanning was a way for me to take what I already enjoy doing and take it a step further. That is actually a beaver chewed log rope bed covered with an elk hide, believe it or not. I made that because I wanted to have a little more comfortable place to sleep than on a stony floor, if you will. These are actually chewed by beavers. All of the bark and things have been removed from it. Elk hair, as well as deer, other kinds of deer, moose, that kind of thing, actually have hollow hair, so it's a very good insulator. When an animal dies, it deserves the respect to have as much of its life appreciated. And that's part of what I do, I guess. My family enjoys the meat and we use that to the best of our ability, but by tanning, we're also able to take that a, a big step further and have much less waste. There's a responsibility there and that's something that people don't often take into account. Most animals actually have enough brain material to tan their own hide and there are a few exceptions. Uh, cows being one of them, bison being another. They just have too thick of a hide, but a deer hide will tan up very nicely using its own brain. Squirrel, raccoon, possum, mink, beaver, doesn't matter. We're gonna frame up a deer hide and we're gonna let it dry. And it's gonna be kind of like a drum. Uh, it'll dry out and allow us to pull that hair out a lot better. And I've got a tool here, we call it a dry scraper. And this method of scraping a hide is actually called dry scraping. This removes the hair from the hide and gets us one step closer to making buckskin. So when scraping the hide, you wanna make sure you've positioned the hide where the hair is running down. It's gonna make it a lot easier when you're pulling the, the hair out with your scraper. I'll put my foot on the frame just to kind of add some stability. And I literally just start scraping on the hide and I start pulling that hair out. Well, and you do stuff like that every once in a while. When you brain tan a hide, um, when it is soft and finished, it is not actually finished. Um, if it were to get wet, it were to go right back to rawhide. When you smoke a hide, it actually, the, uh, the smoke insulates the fibers of the hide and it protects them from water, from stiffening back up and provides a better material, a stronger material and a softer material for working with. I'm using a wrought iron tripod today to hold up my hide and this would have been forged by a blacksmith. They would have uh, heated up the ends to turn them over, loop them all together as kind of a utility tool. You can cook with it and you could hang lanterns from it, candles, that kind of thing, as well as do these kinds of things. I've dug a pit where we actually keep the fire. We would just put coals into this pit and we would do that so we don't have an active fire. We don't want to take a chance in scorching our hide. We would have just coals with punky wood, that's rotten wood or bark, and that would mostly just smoke and provide the color for the hide that we want. Different wood actually will provide different shades of color. There are woods that would make hides appear almost like a canary yellow color. Pine, for instance, that would darken a hide greatly. But you run into problems with pine as well because of the pitch, it'll have a turpentine smell. I want to be a part of a bigger picture, to provide a service, to provide something for someone sometime. And that may be today, it may be tomorrow, it may be a year from now. But like anything in the village, whether it is blacksmithing or it's someone that is cooking to provide or farming, butchering and processing of animals, everyone has something to offer to someone else, which is what makes a community kind of go around. 
And that is something that we pride ourselves on around here, that there's generally something that someone's gonna need that we can provide for them.